so we finally know more about the formation system coming into rise of kingdoms it's likely going to be in the game at the time that you're watching this video and you guys know that i love tier lists like a fat kid loves cake so today we're going to talk about each formation individually and rank them up against each other and then i'll give my thoughts on the entire armament and inscription system later in the video but first today's video is sponsored by bloodline heroes of lithis in bloodline not only are you going to be building your own gorgeous kingdom with beautiful beautiful scenery the graphics and heroes in this game look absolutely incredible and it has one of the most unique game mechanics I've ever seen download the game with a link in the description to receive an amazing starter pack bloodline has its own unique hybrid system that lets you create your own legendary champions you can have a lichen father with an orcish mother and the resulting air of that hybrid not only looks unique and super cool but it also gains the talents of both the parents and the reason right now is the best time to try bloodline line is because the game just got its biggest update ever on top of that starting October 27th is the Halloween event that introduces the brand new vampire clan if you download bloodline for free with the link in the description below or the QR code on the screen you're gonna get a free starter pack with a ton of goodies worth $20 so what are you waiting for boys the vampires are waiting go ahead and download bloodline today what's going on guys cheers okay back to the video you can see that the update came out today there was server maintenance six hours ago and a lot of players if you're watching this maybe you experienced this we're having trouble staying logged in it happened to me as well on the pc version but apparently it's also happening on players using ios and android devices but even though this update sort of broke the game this update is in fact the one that will be giving us formations because as you can see in my side quests here i will get 15 sage testimonies if i upgrade my state form to level two and if i click go unfortunately the state form is not here so i think there's still some issues with perhaps the update rollout or maybe it will come at reset however we did get the official video from rise of kingdoms that tells us what all of the different formations actually do so let's talk about each of these formations individually the first one we're going to talk about is the arch formation and this is what i believe one of the best formations that everyone's going to be using in rise of kingdoms because this gives you five percent normal attack damage this is especially going to be good for commanders like attila takedo or call Herald that are already dealing a massive amount of normal attack damage and remember that increasing the normal attack damage in rise of kingdoms also increases your counter attack damage by five percent as well because normal attacks are basically the white numbers you see in the open field when you're fighting which is your normal attack and counter attack together so overall I think this is going to be probably the most used if not the second most used in the game now what we have to know and and this because it's not really fully in the game right now we don't know this um can you apply a formation to a rally or garrison I would imagine that you can I'm pretty sure the devs have already confirmed that you can but it seems a little odd to me that you would be able to put a garrison in a formation right because theoretically they would be in the flag or in the fortress so why would you be in formation in a building I mean I guess you could be so I'm going to proceed with this tier list under the assumption that rallies and garrisons can use formations because I'm pretty sure that's how this is going to be next we have the wedge formation which I also think is going to be one of the most popular if not the most popular formation in rise of kingdoms because this formation gives you five percent extra skill damage that is equivalent to the twilight fall city skin with literally zero downside and let me tell you this is easily one of the most popular city skins in massive kvk wars because it's just so generically good it works for pretty much every army in that same way i think five percent bonus skill damage on a formation is going to be equally as good especially again for rallies and garrisons just when you thought isong ye couldn't get more skill damage here it is baby there we go these two i think are going to be the cream of the crop uh whether you're rallying or garrisoning i think you're still probably going to pick one of these two but let's talk about the v formation because this is a ranged mode formation essentially you're not getting any buffs from this formation you can see here that mehmed is in ranged mode and he's able to deal damage to enemies within this circular area and in game it says that these range units will deal one ranged attack per second so it seems like they're not going to be dealing normal attack damage every second like you would be in a regular fight they'll be dealing what's called ranged attack damage if this functions the same way as kvk ranged like towers it probably means you're only going to be dealing slightly wounded units to the target correct me if i'm wrong and we'll obviously have to test this in game but it's also worth noting that you will gain rage when you're in this mode however you will not spend rage while you're in this mode so you can 
effectively build up your rage meter by attacking at range and then dismantle your ranged unit and run into battle and deal your skill damage and then run back uh, I think that's a lot of micro optimization especially in a massive open field brawl I don't realistically know how well you're gonna be able to manage both a regular March and a ranged March I feel like for players that are maybe free to play they may prefer range damage because well because you can kind of sit back behind all the whales and get some nice chip damage in there or at least you can surround an important uh flag or fortress or something like that and still deal uh damage that is meaningful and useful but another thing that I'm a little bit worried about with the range damage is that there's already so many tactics to stall in the open field so for example there's flag stacking right where people you know you're in an open field fight and alliances will just stack flags on top of one another and then you have to burn through all those flags and then you get to the fortresses and because there's like nine shell alliances there's nine fortresses covering a pass and it takes so long to burn them uh and now if you have a bunch of players just sitting safely back in ranged mode uh they're going to be just chipping away at you which makes it take maybe a little bit longer so this is going to be really interesting i'm going to put this at a i don't think this is going to be broken i don't think it's going to be overpowered i think it's going to be a little bit annoying to manage but i think for free to play players this could be nice because it's a way to deal damage without taking damage in return now keep in mind it does take about 10 seconds i guess to set up this little ranged ballista tower so if you get caught during the setup process you're probably going to just get swarmed down to zero which definitely sucks so the commanders that you use here probably do still matter you still will want to use relevant commanders in your uh in your tower even though you're dealing range damage but it's going to be interesting to see how this evolves over time are we going to see range based commanders is there going to be an advantage to using maybe archers for ranged units I have no idea but in general I don't think that this is going to be overpowered but I think it will definitely have its uses next let's talk about the echelon buff according to the video it says when this troop grants percentage based buffs to other troops their effects are multiplied by 1.2 with a maximum increase of up to 5% of their original value after upgrading. So this is again, a very interesting formation, clearly meant to be more of a supportive formation rather than a damage dealing formation. And this immediately calls to mind a lot of commanders, obviously Constantine, I feel like it's going to be incredible for this because this is a percentage based buff to nearby allies. Now, it says that this now in game it says that this applies to percentage base buffs to other troops so does that mean that Constantine's damage taken reduction will be buffed for other units and not for his own that's going to be really odd and I hope that they change that I think this echelon formation I don't think is so broken that it shouldn't apply to your own units but just to give you an idea this will bump Constantine's damage taken reduction buff from 10 percent to 12 percent and if this is applying to five armies in total, that is going to be 10% less damage that your allies take from all sources, which is going to be incredible. Obviously we can also look at commanders like Joan of Arc, which will increase all of her buffs from 30% to 35%, which is in fact the cap. Now, had they not include that included that cap, it only would have increased it to 36%. So I don't really know like who has a bigger AOE buff than Joan of Arc from a percentage standpoint. I really don't know if there is one. So I don't know what the point of that cap is, but it's also worth noting that it doesn't seem like this is going to apply to rage regeneration because it says percentage based and rage is not percentage based. However, Lilith is notoriously bad at uh translations and wording in general so of course we'll have to find all the nuances with this formation in general because this is such a small buff i'm gonna leave it at a for now and i definitely think it's gonna be used less frequently than ranged mode how many buffing marches are you really bringing these days i feel like there's so many ultra high damaging commanders out there right now that you're really not bringing like you're not bringing buffing commanders this is another one that I think is going to be used more by free to play to support their nearby whales which is going to be useful for sure I mean having more Joan of Arcs in the field with this is going to make Joan of Arc better which is nice but again realistically are most high damage players going to be using this probably not you probably just want flat more normal attacker skill damage next we'll talk about the line formation and this I'm going to put in B tier but it just depends on how you rank this because this is 10 percent gathering speed 
for everything except for gems so you're gonna get 10 percent more gathering speed for food wood stone and gold but not for gems which is super annoying like like why like lilith intentionally excluded gems from that like bro this entire update spits on free to play and stomps their skull into the dirt but you can't give them 10 percent more gem gathering speed like anyway um i think this is a b obviously if you you know if you if you have farm accounts this is going to be like s tier because you're going to just gain way more gathering speed this is going to be exceptionally good for sending to the alliance pits of course um so you're going to just be sucking up those resources faster than anyone else in your alliance who isn't using this formation so in general it's going to be used absolutely but it's not that exciting like it, it's more but gathering so who can great great next we're going to talk about the hollow square formation this is going to reduce the damage you take by two percent I generally think this is not going to be used that much um it's definitely better than gathering speed for sure it may be a low a tier but realistically like if I told you right that you can uh, go and make five percent more money at your job or you can go to the grocery store and everything costs two percent less you're gonna take five percent more salary and of course that depends like oh I'm York what if I go to buy a car but I only make minimum wage like I, I get okay I get it it's not a great example but in general that's how I'm looking at this compared to five percent normal attack damage versus five percent skill damage right I I mean I would just rather more damage than reducing the damage by a smaller margin and again this is all damage right so it's you know you're taking two percent less normal attack damage counter attack damage skill damage damage over time i guess right it would be everything so realistically uh it is everything historically right how many tanky commanders do you use in the open field right now the meta is not really there you see pakal herald that's pretty much it right and of course you do see some martel heralds for people like me who aren't as well and haven't committed to the uh pakal expertise just yet but when you think about the most common marches in the open field like guan leo or nevsky william nevsky joan Boudica ysg nebu ysg saladin william right these are the most common open field uh pairs that you would see and in all those instances they're mostly focused on just massive damage and you're probably better off using one of the two in s tier then you are just reducing the damage you take by two percent now it's worth noting that you may consider using this in a garrison but i would say that even for longer fights like past fights and stuff you probably still just want more five percent more normal attack damage or five percent more skill damage like i mean think about zenobia yss right zenobia doesn't have skill damage but yss does and it's a nice aoe right and you the, the value adds up over time for those aoe hits from players who are you know they're not paying attention they have troops near the pass or they disconnect and their troops are just wandering around they get hit by the aoe or whatever the case might be um i think that chip damage adds up over time and that might just be better than taking two percent less damage it's hard to tell we'll have to test it um but in general i i don't know maybe i'm completely wrong here but i just feel like this is this is not that exciting to me we need to buff tanks that's really like we need to make a whole video about that tanks and rise of kingdoms are garbage and i don't understand why that's a huge missed opportunity i would love to see more pakal herald type marches next is the triple line formation and this is definitely i think the worst formation in the game uh it gives you five percent more march speed and uh, like of course there are uses for that right i mean if you really wanted to min max for march speed you really wanted like your cao cao to just be ripping across the battlefield like he's in a ferrari then of course this is going to be the formation that you're going to use however i gotta ask you know how valuable is that is that march speed right you might say oh well it's gonna help me get away from all the wells but great news vip 15 gives you five percent march speed so if you're if you're under vip 15 then really that formation is just gonna bring you up to where all the wells already are so will this help you get away from some fights sure right of course that is the case but again five percent more march speed i mean that's basically like an untalented call of the loyal that's five percent march speed right and this i mean i know players use this because it's more of like a filler accessory but i i, I mean for me i don't use it really at all i mean I, th he's on it's on richard because that's my barbing march right um realistically and i know that most players don't have the same equipment that i do but I'm not even a massive well and I have better uses than March speed so yeah I don't know this is I mean you're gonna put this on your gem gathering marches right because it's just gonna get you to the nodes faster because they didn't let you gather faster with the line formation at least for gems but yeah again five percent March speed I, I don't know but the truth about this system is that obviously 
the formation system right these these are small buffs at the end of the day it's nothing crazy it's not like 10 percent all damage or 20 percent cavalry attack like it's not it's nothing absolutely game changing these are micro optimizations that you're gonna get for free so everyone's gonna be able to do formations once they unlock the building and level it up and all that stuff um so this basically is uh an even playing field right and the, the downside of this is that I was under the impression that formations were going to come into the game and some formations would counter others that was my hope from a strategy perspective um, but unfortunately it looks like these are just very small very flat buffs that aren't really going to move the needle for very many people but they set the stage for armaments and this is the truth about this system is that the formation system is only being implemented as a means to sell us armaments and look we don't have this in the game yet i'm not going to say whether or not it's pay to win but what i will say is there is already confirmed a bundle so i know i was going to donate charity if there wasn't a bundle sorry to say i won't be doing that because there is a bundle it is confirmed i've already seen the images of it in the game files there's a bundle for armaments whether it's in the game at day one i have no idea right there's also already images for vip 19 and 20 in the game files uh, and that's not in the game yet either but we know it will come eventually but the picture for the bundle is in the game so we already know there's going to be bundle here which means the whales are going to be able to purchase a ton of armaments and uh you know get to working on those op inscriptions now it will say that in this video they do show uh some inscriptions give you like i think one of the legendary ones was just like one percent all damage which isn't crazy but then you think about like okay well you're gonna have four on the same formation so it's actually if you're a super whale and you get that for all of your armaments then you're gonna have four percent all damage which is sort of a meaningful amount on top of all the other buffs that these are giving you right that four percent all damage is just for the inscriptions not the armaments buffs themselves and then that's also on top of all the other advantages whales have so you know really to, to determine if this is a pay to win system I mean uh, bare bones it is right like that that's just objective like it's it can you spend money to get more advancement in the system yes okay great it's pay to win uh but the question is how pay to win is it right because we're playing a pay to win game so we all know that the whole game is pay to win it's just how big of the gap between free to play and pay to win is there and that is something we don't really know right now before these come into the game um you know if you do the math here for a lot of these it looks like each armament could give you upwards of like five to seven percent of stats so you're looking at like 20 to 30 percent bonus stats for like really good legendary armaments and then plus on top of that there's the inscriptions um but you also have to look at like what does the epic ones get right because as a free-to-play player you're probably going to get your hands on quite a few of the epic ones and you know if we take a look here we can assume that maybe it's like four to five percent of stats for each of the epic armaments and you're gonna have four of them so that's like 20 percent of stats like on a good day right and you also can put inscriptions in them so that's nice so i mean at the end of the day wells will probably have at like in a few months when everyone's done spending on this and um, they'll probably have like a 10 percent uh stat buff advantage over everybody else that's my estimation right we obviously have to see how this actually works in the game and so you know a 10 percent stat buff is that crazy yeah I, I mean I I'm not happy about that right I'd rather it just straight up not be in the game but you also have to look at something like crystal tech improved morale gives whales 10 percent all damage right so it's like I mean that crystal tech is still a bigger problem in the game than armaments in my opinion because crystal tech resets every kvk so even small spenders can't max this all the time right whereas the armament system seems to be uh maybe of similar impact if not less of an impact than crystal tech but it's a permanent system it's permanent power and that's I like that I'm okay with working towards permanent power if it's small and it happens over time so yeah again do I like this system no could it be worse definitely um it's 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 just fine I think the blue armaments are complete like they're terrible from what I've seen here like they're they're basically just going to be slot fillers until you can get a purple right I mean like here we see the harp of Horus and it's like 1.3 percent and then half a percent all damn like I don't know that just doesn't seem great to me I mean again you're gonna if you have four of these then it's like okay that's two percent all damage so that's cool uh but the fact that we're, we're we're breaking the game down into tenths or hundredths of a percent at this point it's like maybe pump the brakes a little bit on the systems right I feel like rise of kingdoms is going down a path of death by a thousand cuts or death by a thousand systems right 
every year we're implementing a new system that's slightly pay to win like i'm kind of sick of it i don't know about you guys um is this gonna you know is this a game breaking uh, implementation again i don't think it's game breaking but i'd rather it not be in the game just straight up i just i would just rather it not be here i think the game is better without another system just straight up I and mean, we've got like 70 systems in the game i'm predicting next year there's going to be a new temple building that you have to build within your city it's going to be like a, a building that you have to do and you're have to, gonna have to get it up to level 25 and the temple will let you research up to 10 different uh religions and each religion is going to give you a certain buff and in order to unlock the different buffs you're gonna have to spend gems on prayers so one prayer equals 10 gems right uh and, you know like what how many systems does the game need before we say okay maybe we actually have to fix the systems that are already here um and and again i that's probably never gonna happen because fixing systems doesn't make money new systems makes money so it is what it is guys uh that's kind of my my assumption on the uh the the way that this system is going to play out um does this ruin the game no is it is the game better without it yes is it pay to win a little bit uh and we'll just have to iron out the iron out the details as we go but if you're looking for formations to focus on i would say just probably forget these three uh these four are going to be the ones that you probably want to have most of your good armaments in uh primarily the first two like realistically that's going to be that um i guess the last question that i have for this system and we'll we're only hours away from discovering this is if you put four armaments on a particular formation and then you send one of your armies out in the open field can you then send a second army out into the open field with that same formation and all of the same armaments if that is the case that's actually pretty good if i have to build multiple armament sets for multiple armies in the same formation that's gonna suck dick. so i hope that that's not how the system works but we'll find out sooner or later i also want to take another moment to thank today's sponsor bloodline heroes of lithis download link will be in the description below sponsors like bloodline help me keep the lights on boys i live in new york city it's mega expensive to live here okay and your boy is broke also it's free and lord knows a lot of you guys are going to quit rise of kingdom soon anyway so I, at least just download it give it a try drop a thumbs up on the video to help me defeat the youtube algorithm comment your thoughts down below on the brand new system of formation subscribe to the channel if you're new here we're so close to 40k click the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace